Hey there, I'm Stu Gray. This is the Stupendous Marriage Podcast. Thanks so much for checking us out. You can find me on Twitter at Stu Gray. I'm tweeting marriage encouragement for you. Check out this quote from Frederick Nietzsche. It is not a lack of love, but a lack of friendship that makes unhappy marriages. I mean, that's a big deal. I came across this stat last year. It may have been from Trey and Lee Morgan at Stronger Marriages, but I've seen it bounce around several times that 80% of divorces are due to lack of closeness with your spouse, not from an affair, not from fighting with your spouse. So how do you stay close? How do you nurture your friendship with your spouse to keep your love going? Okay, so I've got some ideas here for you. Don't hold grudges against your spouse. It's so easy to do. I Sometimes I feel like I just want to be mad for a while. Well, that's not helpful. I want to say something bad to just burn her back for something that hurt my feelings when she said something that I misconstrued or I misheard or misunderstood. I just want to lob a zinger her way to hurt her back. Man, that just doesn't work. You've got to stop nitpicking every fault that your spouse has. We, as human beings, are a combination of quote-unquote good and quote-unquote bad things. We have positive aspects. We have negative aspects. Some days, our negative aspects just kind of get the better of us and you can't do anything about it. Your spouse is going to do things well. They're going to do things poorly. On some days, they're going to do more poor things in your eyes. Some days, they're going to do more great things in your eyes. And it's going to change from day to day. Nitpicking someone's faults, always calling out the negative thing that they do is a real drag, honestly. Because there are positive things that your spouse might be doing that you're just overlooking. Our brains are wired to see these negative things, unfortunately, and we forget to call out the positive things. What if you paid attention to more of the positive things that your spouse is doing instead of just always nagging about the things where they're falling down? Another way to stay far away and not nurture your closeness with your spouse is not picking up the slack around the house when they're feeling tired or overwhelmed. Boy, Lisa just gets tired sometimes. She gets overwhelmed. And I could just sit on the couch and ignore it, not pay attention to it, or stay up in my studio here and just get to work and work and work and work. And that's a way I distract myself, unfortunately, as a husband. And I have to remember, man, I am breaking down my relationship when I run and hide when she is needing help with work or the house or dinner. And it can go the other way too. If your husband needs help with something around the house and you're out shopping or you're out hanging with your girlfriends or you're not paying attention to his physical needs because we guys tend to lean towards wanting sex more often than you ladies do, generally speaking, If you're ignoring those things, you're putting a wedge between you and your spouse and you're pushing yourself further and further away. You're not staying close. You're not nurturing your intimate friendship. And talking about this, if you don't make sex a priority for both of you, it is a positive thing for wives and husbands to have sex. It is the one big thing that makes a marriage a marriage and not just friendship. If you're not having consistent sex, I'm not going to say how much you need or don't need because that is a decision you have to make together as a husband and wife, right? So there are always suggestions. There are gurus who say you should have X amount of sex a week, a month, a year, but you have to decide as a couple what works for you and then you need to stick to it. You need to make it a priority in your life because sex is like a glue. Sex is a salve for when you are hurting or sad or lonely in your relationship or just in life. When it gets tough, sex can connect you in ways that other things can not connect you. You know, you're going to push yourself away from your spouse if you're putting your kids or your extended family in front of your marriage. 
I love my son. He's 17 years old now. He's going to be a senior this coming school year. Love him. Love him to death, right? But if he is the center of my life, that means all of my focus, all of my attention, all of my thoughts are going to his life, his social calendar, all the things he needs to do. And yes, my son still needs help and I still need to focus on him because that is what we do as parents. But if our lives completely revolve around Every event that they're doing, every sporting event that they're doing, and it's causing my wife Lisa and I to not be as connected, that can be problematic. And we only have one son. We've got friends who've got three, four, six, eight, ten kids, and they have to negotiate all of their kids' calendars, all of their kids' events, while still maintaining their marriage. And that goes for your extended family, too. If you're rushing around taking care of family members who are getting older, and you haven't talked about it openly, honestly, and negotiated with your spouse how much time, what this is going to look like in this new season. We all have extended family members that have different needs also and different seasons of life. And this may be a season of life where you do have to step up and help other family members in their life. A big important thing is to have open honest communication with your spouse. You need to be talking every day for at least 15 minutes, just checking in, see how you're doing emotionally, physically, spiritually, not always talking about the plans and events for the day, but just checking in with one another and then making it a regular checkup every week, every month to see how you're doing in all these different areas to stay close with your spouse. Have real open conversations about all the events in your life. It's not always is an easy 15 minute conversation if you haven't had consistent checkups and talks with your spouse every day and every week and every month it's really easy to start holding on to hurts and holding on to resentments and then it makes that conversation a whole lot harder to have especially the first couple if you're nursing feelings of not feeling close to your spouse so staying consistent with checking in with your spouse is very very important and then just being gracious and honest and humble and Make sure you're listening to your spouse as you're having these conversations. It's going to draw you back together. You will get closer together as husband and wife. It will help you shoulder the burdens of the hard things that we deal with in life. As husband and wife, we want to be standing together, working together, shouldering life's burdens together. We don't want to be far away from one another because if you're far away from one another, all those burdens are going to be dumped between the two of you right? You want to stand together so you can carry them well with one another. Hope this was helpful for you. Thanks so much for listening. Again, I'm on Twitter. If you want to follow along at Stu Gray, got lots of marriage encouragement tweets there. If you've got a question about marriage, send me a DM. We'll talk to you next time. (laughs) 